Chapter 3 is about software. After completing this chapter, I hope you will be able to explain computer software concept, discuss the types of system software programs, distinguish between system software and application software, explain the basic functions, features, and categories of operating system, explain the purpose of utilities and utility switch, describe device driver, define programming and describe the six steps of programming, explain the five generations of programming languages, identify general purpose applications, describe word processors, spreadsheets, database management system, and presentation programs as well as database management system. Identify specialized applications. Describe graphics programs, web authoring programs, and other specialized professional applications. Describe mobile apps and app stores. And finally, explain software suites. Information system is an organized combination of people, hardware and software, policies and procedures, data resources, and connectivity or communication networks. This system stores, retrieves, transforms, and disseminate information in an organization. Software which is part of the information system is the programs that are needed to accomplish the input, processing, output, storage, and control activities of information systems. Software is the set of instructions that tell the hardware what to do. Computer hardware is only effective as the instruction we give it and those instructions are contained in software. So software is created through the process of programming. Software consists of computer programs which are sequences of instructions for the computer. The process of writing programs is called as programming and individuals who perform this task is called as programmers or software engineer so without software the hardware would not be functional software is the collections of computer programs and related data that provide the instructions telling a computer what to do and how to do. It contains complete instructions that control, manage and support operational activities of computer system. There are various kinds of programs used to operate and manipulate computers and they are peripheral devices. Sometimes software is also called as program. So there are two types of computer software, system software and application software. The human computer interface can be described as the point of communication between the end user and the computer. The flow of information between the end user and computer is shown in this diagram. 
the user interface is the point of human computer interaction and communication in a device this can include display screens keyboards a mouse and the appearance of a desktop it is also the way through which a user interacts with an application or a website an end user is the person that a software program or hardware device is designed for the end user is the person who uses the software or hardware after it has been fully developed marketed and installed the user uses application software to carry out general purpose application functions or some specific set of tasks or functions application software is a computer software which is designed to help the user in performing single or multiple related tasks it employs the capabilities of a computer directly to a task that the user wishes it to perform this application software cannot be used without the system software system software is a type of computer program that is designed to run a computer's hardware and application programs if we think of the computer system as a layered model the system software is the interface between the hardware and the user applications so the hardware components of a computer are actuated and controlled with the help of software this is the basic relationship between hardware and software so system software is the programs used to handle the computer hardware and to execute the application software computer software can be broadly divided into two categories system software and application software system software manage the hardware and create the interface between the hardware and the user it manage and supports operations of computer systems and network and application software is the category of programs that do something useful for the user it performs information processing tasks for end users System software are programs or computer instructions that manage and support a computer system and its information processing activities. They are designed to operate the computer hardware and to provide and maintain a platform for running application software. There are two categories of system software system management programs and system development program system management programs are all designed to control coordinate and support the procedures and functions of computer hardware they actually enable functional interaction between hardware software and the user system software carries out middleman tasks to ensure communication between other software and hardware to allow harmonious coexistence with the user so system management programs can be categorized into system control programs 
and system support programs. A system control program is a program that manage or controls the use of hardware, software, network, and data resources of computer system during the execution of the various information processing jobs of users. The example of system control programs are like operating systems, computer BIOS, firmware and device driver. Another category of system management program is system support programs. A system support program is a program that supports the operations, management and users of a computer system by providing a variety of support services. The example of system support programs are like network management programs, database management system, system utility programs, performance monitors and security monitors. Another category of system software is system development program. A system development program is a program that helps users to develop information system programs and procedures and then prepare user programs for computer processing. The examples of system development programs are language translators and editors, computer edit, software engineering, and programming tools. First, we take a look at the first example of system control program which is the operating system. An operating system is an integrated system of programs that manage the operations of the CPU, control the input or output, storage resources and activities of the computer systems and provide support services as the computer execute applications programs. The operating system must be loaded and activated before other tasks can be accomplished. It allows the part of a computer to work together by performing tasks like transferring data between memory and disk or rendering output onto a display device. It also provides a platform to run high-level system software and application software. So an operating system is a set of programs that coordinate all the activities among computer or mobile device hardware. Among the general function of the operating system are start and shut down a computer or a mobile device, provide a user interface, managing programs, managing memory, coordinating tasks, configuring devices, monitoring performance, establishing an internet connection, providing file management and other device or media related tasks, updating system software, controlling a network and administering security. First, we take a look at one of the functions of the operating system in starting the computer. So the process of starting a computer and loads the operating system into the main memory. Main memory is the random access memory. So this is called as booting. So booting process can be 
initiated by hardware such as a button press written on the computer or by a software command after it is switched on a computer central processing unit or cpu has no software in the main memory so some process must load software into memory before it can be executed this may be done by hardware or firmware in the cpu or by a separate processor in the computer system during the boot process the computer goes through multiple steps to ensure the computer hardware works correctly and the necessary software can be loaded so when booting the computer perform this task so after pressing the power button on the computer start up the power supply which subsequently provides power to the other hardware components inside the computer case and then a self diagnostic is performed which is also known as a power on self test or post to check if all hardware in the computer is working properly and then the basic IO system, input output system or BIOS checks the hard drive for the bootloader located in the first sector of the hard drive. So this bootloader looks for the operating system on the hard drive and begin loading the found operating system. For example, Microsoft Windows, Linux or Mac operating system. Hardware drivers are loaded, allowing the operating system to interact and utilize the hardware components inside the computer case. So if configured in the operating system, a login screen is displayed, allowing the user to enter a username and a password to log in. So any other additional software programs are configured to start with the operating system which is known as a startup programs are loaded. So examples of common startup programs include antivirus software or printer management software. So let's see the examples of how the computer starts. Okay, this is the example of how the computer boot process works. It's important to understand the boot process because it provides several key pieces of forensic information and allows you, as a forensic examiner, to control the boot process to use forensic booting tools. Let's take a look at what happens when you boot a computer. When you turn on your computer, the power supply sends power to the motherboard which in turn activates the boot process. The power on self-test post instructions are stored in a ROM, a read-only memory chip, as part of the BIOS, or the basic input-output system. The post runs through a series of tests to make sure everything is working. Most post sequences will have a combination of audible and visual messages to let you know what is and isn't working. These are the beeps that you generally hear when your computer is booting up. The post checks your video card. At that point, you will see information from the post on the screen. The post then checks to make sure it can find a CPU and that it's communicating. Then it tests your RAM. This is a very basic check of whether it can communicate with your RAM. Now it checks for keyboard and mouse. Depending upon the type of keyboard you have, you might see the keyboard's lights flash. At this point, you would normally see an indication on the screen of how you can enter the BIOS setup program on your computer. Each BIOS software vendor will have a different keystroke, but it is often either F2, F10, or the delete key. This vendor's key is F2, and we will enter BIOS setup. 
This is where important forensic information is stored, including date and time information and the booting order. Your computer can be set to boot from your hard drive first or from your CD or a USB drive or even from the network. If you want to boot the computer with a forensic boot CD or forensic USB device, you may need to change the boot order. Lights on each drive will flash as the post checks them for booting instructions. Most computers are set up to check the optical drive first. This makes it easier to install new operating systems. Then they check the very first hard drive, drive zero. Post is looking for the master boot record. The master boot record is always at cylinder zero, head zero, and sector one. It points to the boot sector. Finally, post is done and the operating system takes over. Okay, there are two types of booting, cold boot and warm boot. Cold booting is the process of starting a computer from shutdown or a powerless state or when the user press the power button or switches on a computer after it has been powered off completely. And one boot is the process of restarting a computer that is already on without completely turning the computer off. Users can perform a one boot by pressing the control, alternate and delete keys simultaneously on a keyboard or by issuing the restart command. A warm boot is usually preferable over a cold boot because it takes less time to reboot the system and the components don't reset completely. So a cold boot, on the other hand, completely wipes off the memory and resets the components and power source. There are five basic functions of operating system in the operations of a computer system. So the operating system provides a user interface. It also provides resource management, task management, file management, utilities and support services. For user interface, it is for end users between the system and network communications. For resource management, it is used to manage the use of hardware resources. For task management, it is used for managing the accomplishment of tasks. File management is used to manage data and program files and utilities and other functions provide a variety of support services. A user interface is the part of the operating system that allow us to communicate with it so that we can load programs, we can access files and accomplish other tasks. So there are three main types of user interface command driven which is using the command line interface okay for example like dos or unix prompts okay so this is a command line interface example okay this is using the microsoft windows command prompt where we enter the instructions inside the command line interface okay so this is one example of using command driven okay so we have to wait until it finished before we enter other 
instructions the second types of user interface is a menu driven which is choose the command on the menu okay for example the notepad so using the notepad okay we choose okay the instructions based on the menu so the command for example we use the to make a new document okay under the file tab okay new windows or we can use the edit menu here okay undo find next format okay selecting type of font okay uh and view help so this is example of choosing the command on the menu okay so this is the example and the third types of user interface is a graphical user interface that contain icons okay for example in this microsoft word you can find the menu driven as well okay for example like this one okay in file we have the menu driven and we also have the graphical user interface that contains the icons we have bar we have buttons we have boxes okay and other types of images so this is called as a graphical user interface Next functions of operating system is resource management. So a resource management is the part of the operating system that manage the hardware and networking resources of a computer system. So it includes CPU, memory, secondary storage device, telecommunications, and input output peripherals. And examples of resource management is memory management programs. So memory management programs keep tracks of where data and programs are stored, subdivide memory into a number of sections, swap paths of programs and data between memory and secondary storage, and provides virtual memory to process large programs and greater amount of data than the capacity of the memory okay an example so this is an example of the memory management okay You can see under the memory management over here. Okay, so here you can find the allocations of the memory or the memory usage. Okay, for example, now we can see the Google Chrome, which contain 14 windows or 14 tabs that require memory of 477.9 megabytes and followed by this debug video capture and then uh, anti malware service execution microsoft powerpoint so this is how the memory management okay manage the resources all the processes over here A file management is the part of the operating system that controls the creation, deletion, and access of files and programs. It keeps track of physical location on storage devices and maintains directories of information about the location, 
and characteristic of stored file so the file system arrange file in a hierarchical manner so the top level is directories or folders and below of these directories or folders are sub directories or sub folders so we can find file using their path name for example over here this is under drive c folder my documents subfolder term paper and the file name is section one dot doc okay an example of file management okay we can see inside the folder over here so under the this computer this pc okay so this pc are made up by several folders and drive so we can go into drive c this is a drive c and under drive c there are several sub directory or several uh, folders okay for example we have the folder autodesk epson perflog program files okay temporary users and windows so for example we choose windows over here and then under the folder windows there are some other uh, directories as well okay and under this directory okay there is another sub directories and sub folders as well okay An example over here under the documents okay this is under sub folder bapa and under sub folder bapa there is a sub folders uh, for the um uh foundation programs and under this foundation programs there are several files for example this is a file powerpoint file for this chapter okay next function for the operating system is task management so a task management is the part of the operating system that helps accomplish the computing task of end users task is an operation or execution of process such as storing printing or calculating so task management in operating system controls which tasks get access to the cpu and for how long and it also can allocate cpu time to a particular task or interrupt the cpu at any time to substitute a higher priority task furthermore task management supports preemptive and cooperative multitasking and multi-processing so multitasking is the process of doing more than one thing at once or handling more than one program concurrently for example like we do this microsoft powerpoint slide as well as music at the backgrounds or while we recording the video as well okay so operating systems direct processor to alternate time on each programs until processing is complete on the other hand single tasking is the process of focusing on one task at a time results in higher quality results in more quickly for example process executed in single tasking operating system like dos okay an example over here the task management so here are the task management we can see we have several okay, process or several tasks that are uh, going right now are still running okay and this is the cpu that are being used right now okay so the task okay if you see this is the use of the cpu okay and this is the use of memory okay so we can see all the um, details that being using right now okay so these are all the processes okay all the tasks that is being doing right now okay so which is being stopped which are being running 
okay so we can run several programs okay at one time this is called as multitasking okay for example we are running uh google chrome right now we are also have the powerpoint slide we also have like this uh other the uh, recording okay as well over here okay so on the other hand we have a single tasking for example using the microsoft dos operating system which is a single tasking opt-in system which can only do one task or one process at a time okay for example if we are uh, doing or execute the command to show all the files and the directory in this computer so before we do another command or issued other commands or other execution we got to wait until it finish so before we enter another commands like that okay so if this is called as a single tasking So there are several categories of operating system depending on where the software are located. For standalone operating system or desktop operating system, the operating system is located on computer's hard disk and control a single desktop computer. For example, the disk operating system, Windows 7, Windows 10. Okay, Macintosh, Apple Macintosh operating system or Ubuntu. Okay, for embedded operating system or mobile operating system, the entire operating system is stored within or embedded in the handheld devices like smartphones. So the examples of embedded operating system are iPhone operating system, Windows Mobile, Symbian operating system which is used in Nokia phone and Androids. Okay. For network operating system, the operating system is located on one of the connected computers hard disk known as network server. So network operating system controls and coordinate computers that are network or link together for example windows nt server unix and linux here are the examples of opt-in system okay for example like dos unix opt-in system 2 macintosh windows 95 windows 98 windows 2000 windows nt millennium xp 7 windows 8 windows 10 windows 11 okay lindos operating system or linspire google operating systems okay or unix like operating system like linux gnu red hat debian ubuntu or can be the mobile operating system for example like iphone operating system windows mobile symbian android for the full list of this uh, operating system we can take a look in this website okay so this is the list of opt-in system okay categorized by proprietary that means the this is owned by the company okay by the organization okay for example the proprietary account computers amazon apple okay so we can go to apple to take a look so this is example of the opt-in system produced by the Apple company, Apple 2, Apple DOS, okay, Apple 3, Apple Lisa, Apple Macintosh, okay, Apple Network Server, iPhone, iPad, okay. So this is example from opt-in system from the Apple company, okay. And we have some other uh, proprietary as well, Bell Labs, Data General, Data Point. 
okay, DEC, Fujitsu, Google. Okay, we can see the example of Google operating system. Okay, Chromium operating system. Okay, Android, which is also an operating system uh, by Google as well. Okay, uh, where operating system. Or oh, we can go to this uh, Helo Packer operating system, Huawei, IBM, okay, operating system, Microsoft. Okay, we have a lot of Microsoft operating system, which we'll cover later. Okay, we have the Nintendo operating system. Okay, uh, and some are non proprietary. Okay, which is not belong to any organization. For example, Unix. Okay. So, like the Berkeley Software Distribution, Free BSD, NetBSD, GNU, Linux, Android, Open Salaries, okay, Tunis, Plurix, okay, or non Unix like Cosmos, okay, Free DOS, Ghost Operating System, okay, Sharp Operating System, and so on. So there are a lot of uh, list of operating system, okay. Okay, let's take a look at one of the operating system. This operating system or DOS is an operating system used for all the IBM and IBM compatible personal computers between year 1981 until year 1995. So DOS is a computer operating system that resides on and can use a disk storage device such as a floppy disk, hard disk drive, or optical disk. So a disk operating system must provide a, a file system for organizing reading and writing files on the storage disk so this operating system were available for mainframe mini computers microprocessors and home computers and were usually loaded from the disk themselves as part of the boot process so the advantage of this operating system is the ease of use because the user interface is using the command line interface like I've shown it before. However, the disadvantages are that DOS does not support multitasking and also it does not support multi-users. In addition, the disadvantages of using DOS is the limit program use of memory to 640 kilobytes okay so the example of this operating system is for dos or this operating system is like this pc dos ms dos okay concurrent dos flex operating systems Multi-user DOS, okay, IBM four six eight zero operating system, DR DOS, okay, DR DOS, okay, Novel DOS, Free DOS, Pro DOS. So this is an example of the this operating system. Okay, this is an example of command line interface okay, for uh, the DOS and I will show you the example of the how we start or using the DOS for this is using booting the Microsoft DOS 1.0 zero okay 
Okay, first we insert a diskette. Okay, and then we turn on the computer. Then you can hear the CPU fan. Now the operating system, now it counts the memory, the random access memory. So the size of the memory is only 640 kilobyte. And the memory, the address of the memory is okay. And now it will ask for the BIOS, okay. And it will read the operating system from the diskette. And then it asks to enter the date. Okay, and then that is the wrong date. Should start with month first. Okay, that's why asked to enter date twice. Then you come to the command prompt. So this is how the Microsoft DOS 1.0 start. It is year 1981. So now the computer is ready to accept a command. So the person issues the dir command to show all the directories and files inside the are you keeping your savings in fixed deposit because so that is how the bootings look like in the microsoft dos 1.0 Next types of operating system is a Unix. Unix is a computer operating system originally developed in year 1969 by a group of AT&T employees at Bell Labs. So it is a type of operating system that is used for all types of computers, which is machine independent and support multi-user processing. Okay, that means many user can access one machine. Okay, for example, like a server right now. Okay, multitasking. Okay, can done many tasks or many process. Okay, and also content networking. So it is widely used in both servers and workstation and can run on mainframes, mid-range computer and personal computers. Unix system also have a graphical user interface similar to Microsoft Windows which provides an easy to use environment. However, knowledge of Unix is required for operations which are not covered by a graphical program or for when there is no Windows interface available. For example, in a Telnet session. Okay, I'll show you the example of Telnet before. So there are many different versions of Unix, although they share common similar similarities. So the most popular varieties of Unix are Sun Solaris, GNU or Linux, and Mac Operating System X. So in this example, you can see Linux Mandrake version 8.0. Another types of opt-in system is OS2, okay, which is an opt-in system created by Microsoft and IBM for IBM personal computers, but sold and managed solely by IBM. So this OS2 is a 32-bit microprocessor and can support multitasking and networking. So OS2 has its own graphical user interface and desktop and server version. Okay, as you can see in this picture over here. So this is the graphical user interface of OS2. However, it requires memory-intensive applications. 
So this OS2 is compatible with DOS and Windows, which means that it can run all DOS and Windows program. However, programs written specifically to run under OS2 cannot be run under DOS or Windows. Okay, for Macintosh or Apple Macintosh operating system is used only for Apple Macintosh computer that support multitasking. So Apple Macintosh was the first commercially successful personal computer to feature a mouse, a graphical user interface and built-in screen. So it has access to the internet and has powerful graphics and multimedia capabilities. For Microsoft Windows, so this Microsoft Windows is a series of software operating system and graphical user interface produced by Microsoft Corporation. Windows is an operating system and Windows is an operating system to control and manage computer activities. So it is based on graphical user interface and easy to use. Microsoft Windows also support multitasking, networking and multimedia. Okay, we can see here at the list of some Microsoft Windows, okay, according to the year 1985, 1993 until today, 20, 2021. So let's take a look all list of opt-in system under Microsoft Corporation. So here are all the opt-in system under Microsoft. We have the Microsoft DOS. Okay, OS2, which is joined with IBM. Okay, and we have the Windows operating system over here. Okay, so we can see Windows contains 16-bit and 32-bit preemptive and cooperative multitasking running top on Microsoft DOS. And for Windows NT, which is run full 32-bit or 64-bit kernel, which is not depend on the Microsoft DOS. So over here we can see Windows 1, Windows 2, Windows 3, 3.1, Windows for work group 3.1, 3.2, Windows for work group 3.11, Windows 95, Windows 98, Windows Millennium Edition. This is under the category of Windows 16 bit and 32 bit. Okay. And another category of Windows is under Windows NT. Okay, NT stands for New Technology, okay, which consists of full 32-bit or 64-bit kernel, which is not dependent on the Microsoft DOS. For example, like Windows NT 3.1, mostly this Windows NT 3.1, 3.5, 3.51, 3.5, is used for server. Okay, and we have Windows 2000 in year 2000, Windows XP Experience, okay, and then Windows Vista, okay, Windows uh, Home Server, Windows 7, Windows Phone 7, Windows 8, okay, so Windows 8.1, this is the use on the personal computers, Windows 10, and Windows 10 on mobile phone, and Windows 11, which is currently release in june 24th this year okay so windows 11 is an upcoming major versions of the windows new technology opt-in system developed by microsoft so it was announced on june 24th this year and windows 11 is the successor to windows 10 release in 2015 okay so Let's see. Okay, here are the list of Windows version according to the year. Okay. So let's see the first Windows. 
so the first windows is the windows 1.0 windows 1.0 is a graphical operating environment for personal computers developed by microsoft okay so microsoft had worked with apple computer to develop applications for apple's 1984 original macintosh which is the first mass produced personal computer with graphical user interface that enable users to see user friendly icons on screen like we see today so microsoft released windows 1.0 on november 20th 1985 as the first versions of the microsoft windows line so this windows 1.0 is a type of software that runs as a graphical and it is a 16-bit multitasking shell on top on existing microsoft dos installation providing an environment which can run graphical programs designed for windows as well as existing Microsoft DOS software. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, on the Windows 1.0. In 1985, Microsoft released Windows 1, an operating environment that ran on top of MS DOS. Windows today is an operating system in and of itself, but back in this time, Windows was just a graphical shell that ran on top of MS DOS. The system consisted of MS-DOS Executive, which let users browse files. It contained a graphical system that was controllable by a mouse and keyboard, and the system was capable of executing other programs and files. Here is an example of the calendar application that is included with Windows. The menu bar in each of these windows provided users with keyboard shortcuts and commands to use certain features of the application. A menu in the corner of each window would be used for window management between different applications. Windows also came with a notepad and an application named Write, which was used for word processing. MS Paint is a well-known program in Windows today, and its origins can be tracked all the way back to the first version of Windows. A feature Steve Ballmer was obviously excited about was the ability to play Reversi. To make settings easy to change for users, Windows came bundled with a control panel. You could also customize all the colors for the interface. Windows was capable of displaying more than one program at once, but not as individual windows. You could only split the screen certain directions to see more than one program at a time. This move function was also usable to snap windows side by side, similar to how snap works in Windows today. So there you have it, a quick tour of the first version of Windows, which helped make personal computers accessible by everyone, except in Nebraska. Okay, so that is a tour of Windows version 1. Okay. Next, the Microsoft Windows 3.1. Okay, this was first introduced by using graphical user interface for personal computers. And this version is based on windows that allow few programs in their own windows. For example, program manager. So the disadvantages of this version is that it requires high memory and storage and operates only on computers with microprocessor 286 with 2 megabyte of RAM and at least contain 10 megabyte of hard disk. Windows 95 are popular in the mid 90s and most usually mostly used in the personal computer. 
So during this time, most of the software are based on Windows format. And the requirement for using this operating system are the minimum storage area or hard disk of 80 megabyte, 8 megabyte of RAM, and the co the microprocessor at least with the 486 DX. So Windows 95 use 32 bit operating system which perform twice better than Windows 3.1 that are using only 16 bit and this windows 95 that support multitasking plug and play and have a better graphical user interface so windows 98 which is also a 32 bit operating system that is closely integrated with the internet and support multitasking, multi-trading, and networking. So it is faster and more integrated compared to Windows 95 with support for additional hardware such as MMX. So MMX is unofficially known as multimedia extension. And for Windows 98 also features with DVD. So the most visible features is integrations of the opt-in system with the web browser software. Windows 2000 is a major release of the Windows new technology opt-in system developed by Microsoft and oriented toward businesses. So Windows 2000 is a 32-bit opt-in system for personal computers, for workstation as well as for network servers. So four editions of Windows 2000 were released. Professional version, server edition, advanced server and data center server. So Windows 2000 support multitasking, multi-processing, intensive networking and internet services for corporate computing. Windows ME, or known as Millennium Edition, is an enhanced Windows operating system for consumer users featuring tools for working with video, photos, music, and home networking. So it was the direct successor to Windows 98 and was released to manufacturing on June 19 year 2000 so it is the final product of the windows family which is based on the windows 95 kernel and microsoft dos so it improved the capabilities for safe guiding critical files so here is the graphical user interface of the windows millennium edition so this Windows ME was targeted specifically at home personal computer users and included the Internet Explorer 5.5, Windows Media Player 7 and the new Windows Movie Maker software. So which provided basic video editing and was designed to be easy to use for home users. Windows NT. So NT was formally expanded to new technology. So Windows NT possess the same ability in Unix such as multi-user, multitasking and high security. So it is suitable for high technology applications, graphic and animation. So it is also appropriate as server in a network. So Windows NT is a processor independent, multi-processing and multi-user operating system. So the first version of Windows NT was Windows NT 3.1 and was produced for workstations and server computers. 
So it was intended to complement consumer version of Windows that were based on Microsoft DOS. Microsoft Windows XP, XP for experience. So Windows XP is a major release of the Windows NT operating system developed by Microsoft. So it was the direct successor to both Windows 2000 for professional users and Windows Millennium Edition for home users. So Windows XP increased performance and stability, more intuitive user interface, improved hardware support, and expanded multimedia capabilities. So Windows XP are reliable and robust operating system with versions for both home and corporate users. So it features support of internet and multimedia and improved networking, security and corporate management capabilities. Windows XP is succeeded by Windows Vista. Windows 7 is the successor to Windows Vista. It remains an operating system for use on personal computers, including home and business desktop, laptops, netbooks, tablet computer, and media center personal computers, and itself was replaced in November 2012 by Windows 8. So the new features are advances in touch and handwriting recognition, support for virtual hard disk, improved performance on multi-core processors, improved boot performance, direct access and kernel improvements. Windows 8 are used for personal computers, including home and business desktop laptops, tablets, and home theater personal computers. So Windows 8 introduced major changes to the opt-in system platform and user interface intended to improve its user experience on mobile devices, such as tablets to better compete with other mobile opt-in system like Android and Apple iOS. So it features a new start screen that, that replaced the start menu of earlier Windows version. It has a new application platform with emphasis on touchscreen input and the new Windows Store to obtain or to purchase applications to run on the operating system. Another operating system is Lindos opt-in system okay, or Linspire. It was commercially an opt-in system based on Debian GNU or Linux and later Ubuntu. So it is a 64-bit Linux based opt-in system that is geared towards the business, education and government worker. So it has all the applications, business users, will need for work, research, and deployment among very high-end desktop system. So this Lindos opt-in system is the first broadband opt-in system that were built to take full advantage of broadband technology and it was designed to fully utilize the world of tomorrow where internet connectivity is bountiful and cheap and computers are ubiquitous. So the latest Linspire is version 10, released on February 8, year 2021, this year. So if we can see, this is the Linspire desktop features. It contains the only office desktop editor, web browser, email client, music, video player, gym, font manager, Inkscape. NitroShare, Synergy, built-in antivirus, integrated virtual machine software, Wine for running certified Windows apps, Netcore support, 
Microsoft SQL Server for Linux support, ISSSB Web App Creator, full ZFS, XFS, and UEFI file system support. Okay, other examples of system control programs are opt-in system, computer BIOS, firmware, and device driver. Okay, so the computer BIOS, BIOS is a basic input or output system, which is a standard defining a firmware interface. So it is built into the personal computer. Firmware is a term often used to denote the fix, usually rather small programs and data structures that internally control various electronic devices. So it provides basic functionality to operate and control the hardware connected or built into the computer. So the primary function of the BIOS is to load and start an operating system. So when the computer start up, the first job for the BIOS is to initialize and identify system devices such as the video display card, keyboard and mouse, hard disk, CD drive, DVD drive and other hardware. So the BIOS then locates software held on a peripheral device designated as a boot device such as hard disk or compact disk and loads and execute that software giving it control of the personal computers. So let's see how do we access the BIOS on certain computers hi friends this video will show you how to access bios on acer laptop for most acer laptops the key you use to enter bios is f2 and as with all computers you enter bios as the computer is booting up however unlike on many laptops Acer recommends that you press and hold the F2 key before you switch on the power. Hold down the key until the BIOS screen is displayed. Otherwise, your laptop might not recognize that you want to enter BIOS and may start up in the usual way. F2 is the traditional Acer Access BIOS key, but there are other options you can try if it doesn't work for your laptop. On some Acer laptop models, you may need to use another key to enter BIOS. The most common alternative key is the delete key, but if it doesn't work, try the insert key. In rare cases, the correct key is F10. From Windows 8 onward, Microsoft added options to make it easier to get into your BIOS settings. If you're looking for an Acer BIOS key for Windows 10, you can use a different approach. Click the Start menu and then choose the gear icon to go to Settings. Select Update and Security from the options that appear, and choose the Recovery tab on the left of the next window. Scroll down to Advanced Startup and click Restart Now. This action restarts your computer and takes you to a Boot option screen instead of starting Windows normally. Choose Troubleshoot, then Advanced Options, and go to FI Firmware Settings. Click Restart, and your computer restarts again and takes you to BIOS.
Okay, so this is an example of the BIOS. Okay, as you can see, okay, this is the basic input output. Okay. Firmware is a low-level software often stored on electrically programmable memory device. So it is fixed, usually small programs and data structures that internally control various electronic devices. The example of devices that contain firmware range from end-user products such as remote controls, calculators, or through computer parts and devices like hard disks, keyboards, TFT screens or memory cards, all the way to scientific instrumentation and industrial robotics. So the firmware is also can be found on more complex consumer devices such as mobile phones, digital cameras, synthesizers and etc to enable the device basic operation as well as implementing higher level functions. So every device such as mouse or printer that is connected to a computer has a special program associated with it, which is called as a device driver. So a device driver or software driver is a computer program allowing higher level computer programs to interact with a hardware device. So it works with the opting system to allow communication between the device and the rest of the computer system. So each time the computer system is started, the opting system loads all the drivers into memory. So it control parts of computers such as disk drive, printers, compact disk drive or computer monitors and act as a translator between a hardware device and the applications of Optin system that use it. Let's see the example of device driver in this computer. So these are all the device or the peripherals on this computer. So it contains audio inputs and outputs, which it has the microphone, it has a speakers, it has a battery with AC adapter, it contains the Bluetooth USB, contains the camera facing, okay, and then contains the disk drive, okay, contains display adapter. AMD Radeon, okay, and NVIDIA GeForce GTX, okay, this contains keyboard, mice, monitor, network adapter, okay, and for each of div this device, it contains the device driver, okay, for example, if I choose the, let's say, the keyboard, okay, I choose this keyboard, and there is a driver associated with this keyboard so this is the driver details okay so this driver details is located in the c drive under windows directory and subdirectory system 32 and another subdirectory drivers and the file name is i8042 prt and kbd class dot sys so this is the driver of the keyboard so if this driver is missing, then this device, the keyboard, will not work. Okay. Similar with all other devices. Okay. For example, if the camera doesn't work, so probably the missing the this driver. Okay. For example, this uh, camera uh, is not working because one of these drivers are missing. Okay, so this device driver is important in order to make sure all devices work inside the computer system.
Okay, system support program is a program that supports the operations, management and users of a computer system by providing a variety of support services. Okay, the example of the system support programs are such as utility software, network management, application server, database manager, collaboration tools and development tools. An example of the system support program for network management. So, network management is used to monitor networks to keep them up and running. Okay, an example of this network management software is the Tivoli product from IBM. And another one is a product from the Hewlett Packard, okay, HP OpenView. Okay, and for the system support program for application server, okay, it shuttles data between business applications and the web. Okay, an example from IBM is WebSphere, and the main competitor is WebLogic. And for database manager to support that provides digital storehouses for business data, example like DB2, and the main competitor is like Oracle 9i. For collaboration tools, okay, to power everything from emails to electronic calendars like Lotus, and the main competitor is Microsoft Exchange. And for development tools that allow programmers to craft software code quickly, okay, example like Rational from IBM and Microsoft Visual Studio Net. So, utility software is a kind of system software designed to help analyze, configure, optimize, and maintain the computer. So, it is a single piece of utility software usually called as a utility tool, utility or a tool. Okay, example of utility software are like these storage utilities that manage the storage like hard disk drive, floppy disk drive, or compact disk drive. These defragmenters that detect computer files whose contents are broken across several locations on the hard disk and move the fragments to one location to increase efficiency. These partitions that divide an individual drive into multiple logical drives. Backup utilities that makes a copy of all information stored on disk and restore either the entire disk or selected files. Disk compressions that compress or uncompress the contents of a disk, increasing the capacity of the disk. Antivirus utilities that scan for computer viruses. Registry cleaners that clean and optimize the Windows registry by removing all registry keys that are no longer in use. Network utilities that analyze computer's network connectivity, configure network settings, check data transfer or log events. And for system development programs, which is a program that helps user develop information system programs and procedures and then prepare user programs for computer processing. This is also known as programming software. Okay, for example, like language translators, editors, computer edit software engineering and programming tools. So programming software is a software or software packages that help programmers develop other software or computer programs. So it includes programming language translator that translate other programs into machine language instruction codes that computers can execute. For example, like compilers, assemblers, 
and interpreters. So another programming software is a programming language editor or also known as programming tools that help programmers write programs by providing program creation and editing capabilities. So language translator program or a translator is a program that translate instructions written in programming languages usually high level languages into machine language or machine code that a computer understands okay a program written in high level language is called source program or source code for example program written in c++ java or other programming languages however computers cannot understand the source code so, before it can be run, the source code must first be translated into a form which a computer understands. So, this form is called object code. So, generally, there are three types of translator. Okay, a compiler, interpreter, and assembler. So, a compiler takes the source code as a whole and translate it into object code all in one go. Once converted, the object code can be run unassisted at any time. So this process is called compilation. For interpreter, the interpreter translate source code into object code one instruction at a time. So, it is a similar to a human translator translating what a person says into another language, sentence by sentence as they speak. So, the result object code is then executed immediately. So, this process is called as interpretation. So, the assemblers are the third type of translator. So, the purpose of an assembler is to translate assembly language into object code whereas compilers and interpreters generate many machine code instruction for each high level instructions assemblers create one machine code instruction for each assembly instruction So, a programming tool is also known as a software development tools. Maybe any software programs or utility that aids software developers or programmers in creating, editing, debugging, maintaining, or performing any programming or development specific tasks. Programming tools were initially designed to support or complement programming languages by providing the functionality and features these languages did not have. Typically, they are standalone utilities that provide or support a particular task within any phase of the development or programming cycle. So, programming tools may have graphical programming interface that helps programmers identify and minimize errors while they are programming. For example, a programming tools are a source code editor or programming editor, debugger, profiler, load testers, performance analyst, graphical user interface development tools. So a combination of many programming tools into a single application with a common interface used in different stages of the system development process is known as computer-aided software engineering tools. So, they are used by programmers or software engineers to develop programs or software.